Hello, friends, and welcome back to our 3ABN Sabbath School panel. We are studying the book of Hebrews. We are in week number six, and the title for this week's lesson is Jesus the Faithful Priest. If you'd like to get the quarterly, get into the quarterly that we're studying or catch up with the lessons, if you've missed any, you can go to 3ABNSabbathSchoolPanel.com. That's 3ABNSabbathSchoolPanel.com. And you can access the Sabbath School lessons there. You can catch up with any of the lessons you may have missed. We are looking forward to continuing the study in the book of Hebrews. So don't go away. We'll be right back. We are so glad you're joining us. We are in lesson number six, Jesus the Faithful Priest. And I am surrounded with an illustrious group, illustrious group of Bible students, starting with my immediate left with <laughs> Shelly Quinn. <laughs> Shelly, I'm, glad you're here. I'm very excited to be here, and I get to speak about the mysterious Melchizedek. Mm, and to your left is John Lomacang. Yes, and I get to speak about an effective priest. Mm. We'll find out what that is. Don't go away. <laughs> and to your left is Jill Morricone. I'm talking about an eternal priest. Amen. And to your left, at the very end of the table, we have Ryan Day. Amen. And I'm talking about a sinless priest. Amen. Amen. So we have it all wrapped around Jesus Christ as the faithful priest. That is the lesson study for number six for today. That's the title for today. And we're looking at Sabbath afternoon. We're going to be looking at a number of verses. But before we do that, we want to start with a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask Shelley to pray for us. Absolutely. Thank you, Shelley. Our glorious and righteous heavenly Father, how we praise you and thank you for the book of Hebrews, for the adult Bible study guide, Lord, that's studying this. And Lord, for the message of Hebrews, mm -hmm. how we praise you. Please now anoint our mouths, our ears. Send your Holy Spirit to be our teacher in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So Sabbath afternoon, it's the first part of the lesson is calling us to read verses, or Hebrews verses 5, 1 through 10, Genesis 14, 18 to 20, 1 Peter 2, verse 9, Hebrews 7, 1 to 3, and Hebrews 7, 11 to 16, 22 and 26. Our memory verse is, for such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Hebrews chapter seven and verse 26. What a powerful picture we have Amen. here of Jesus Christ. And it's all through the book of Hebrews. Amen. Christ saturates the book of Hebrews, bringing us this amazing picture of God's love. Well, the lesson quarterly goes on to describe the gulf that existed between God and us that was caused by sin. It says the problem was compounded because sin also implied the corruption of our nature. God is holy and sin cannot exist in his presence. So our own corrupted nature separated us from God, just as two magnets in the wrong orientation repel each other. Yes. In addition, our corrupted nature made it, made it impossible for human beings in and of themselves to obey God's law. Sin also involves misunderstanding. Human beings lost sight of the love of God, of the justice and mercy of God, and came to see Him as wrathful and demanding with mm. no mercy and no grace. This week, we're going to be studying the amazing things that the Father and the Son have done to bridge that gulf. Hebrews 5 through 7 provides a careful analysis of Jesus' priesthood. The author, Paul, analyzes its origin and purpose, Hebrews 5, 1 through 10 and then exhorts readers not to disregard it. Hebrews 5, 11, 6, 8. Hebrews 5, 11 through 6, 8. But rather to hold fast to the assurance of hope it provides, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 9 through 20. The author also explains characteristics of his priesthood, Hebrews 7, 1 to 10, 
and implications for God's relationship to believers, Hebrews 7, 11 to 28. This week, we're going to focus specifically on Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, and Hebrews 7, 1 to 28. So let's begin with Sunday's lesson. It's entitled, A Priest on Behalf of Human Beings. We're going to read Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. We're not going to read those verses, but if you read Hebrews <laughs> chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, and you're going to ask yourself the question, what is the role of the priesthood according to this passage? And how does Jesus fulfill that role? Now, the reason we're not going to read all those verses is because we're a little pressed for time, and I want to cover everything that this author has laid out for us because it is so good. Amen. Today's lesson is so good. I know you all have good lessons today. Yes. I'm very impressed with this lesson. The author goes on to say the basic purpose of the Levitical priesthood, according to the verses we just read in Hebrews 5, 1 to 10, was to mediate between sinful mm. people and God. Priests were appointed by God in order to minister in behalf of human beings. Therefore, they needed to be merciful and understanding of human weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Have you ever wondered why it is that sometimes your frailties, your weaknesses, your failures are so exposed? Mm -hmm. Well, they are opportunities for you to become merciful and gracious toward others. Mm -hmm. When we think that we're perfect, when we think Amen. that we're just fine and there's nothing wrong with us, man, the standard we're going to hold others to, it's going to be impossible for them to, mm -hmm. to even breathe. But when we realize that we stumble, that we fail, that we're imperfected, imperfect, then it is that we can be gracious toward others. Right. Kind of like Peter, you know, before the fall, oh Lord, I'm not going to forsake you. Jesus said, you're all going to, no, I'm not me. I get up earlier than everyone else. I pray longer than everyone else. You even told me that I was being led by the Holy Spirit. Remember that? Yeah, but I also told you, you know, that get behind me, Satan. And then Jesus right. says, you're all going to uh, uh, betray me. And Peter says, no, not I. But after he actually betrayed Christ before the mm -hmm. cockroach, then Peter had a humble attitude of himself. Yeah. Do you still love me more than everyone else? No, Lord, you know, you, you, you know. Do you still love me? Yeah, you, Lord, you know. And that needs to be our attitude ever. And sometimes God has to allow us to go through some humbling experiences yes. in order for us to, to understand that relationship that we have. Hebrews chapter 5, 5 to 10. Paul shows that Jesus perfectly fulfills these purposes. God appointed him, Hebrews 5, 5 and 6. And also Jesus understands us because he has also suffered, Hebrews 5, 7 through 8. There are some important differences, however. Jesus was not, for example, chosen among men, Hebrews 5.1. Instead, Jesus adopted human nature in order, among other things, to serve as a priest in our behalf. Mm. Jesus did not offer sacrifices for his own sins, Hebrews 5.3, but only for our sins because he was but sinless. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4, 15, Hebrews 7, 26 to 28. So Hebrews says that Jesus prayed to him that was able to save him from death and was heard, Hebrews 5, 7. Hebrews was referring to the second death from which God saved Jesus when he resurrected him. Jesus experienced the second death and was saved from that when God resurrected him, Hebrews 13, verse 20. Hebrews also says that Jesus learned obedience through what he suffered, Hebrews 5, 8. The author goes on to say here, obedience was new to Jesus. Now, we talked about this in an earlier program, but the author emphasizes it again, and I can see why. It's such a powerful thought. Obedience was new to Jesus, not because he was disobedient, but because he was God. Yeah. As sovereign over the universe, Jesus did not need to obey anyone. Mm -hmm. Instead, everyone obeyed him. Jesus' suffering and death on the cross are an essential part of his priestly ministry. So you imagine, the one who obeyed, excuse me, the one who was obeyed became the one who learned to obey. Jesus' suffering and death on the cross are essential, essential part of his ministry. Sufferings did not perfect Jesus in the sense that he improved morally or ethically. Suffering did not make him merciful. To the contrary, Jesus came to this earth because he always was merciful. Man. Praise God, which is why he had compassion on us, Hebrews 2, 17. What Hebrews means is, is that through sufferings, the reality of Jesus' brotherly love, the authenticity of his human nature, the depth of his submission as a representative of humanity to the will of the Father were truly expressed and revealed. 
And we talked about that a little bit in an earlier program. I want to really encourage you, go back and look. If you've missed any programs, go back and catch those programs and catch up yeah. because every program is vital and each one connects with the next. That's the right. author is just has a theme running through this quarterly and he connects it all together. Each one builds on the other. Beautiful. Going on here, he says, it is Christ's life, his life. No, go, let me go back. He was perfected in the sense that his sufferings qualified him to be our high priest. I love that. It was his life of perfect obedience and then his death on the cross, which constitutes the sacrificial offering that Jesus pre presented before the Father as our priest. Now, I'm going to repeat that and I just want you to think about this. Just contemplate it because this is the gospel. This is righteousness by faith. The author says, it was his life of perfect obedience and then his death on the cross, which constitutes the sacrificial offering that Jesus presented before the Father as our priest. When Jesus mediates for us, he doesn't just mediate a sacrifice that forgives our sins. He also mediates a sacrifice of perfect obedience yes. that covers our disobedience. Mm -hmm. And this is vital. Mm -hmm. We're not only saved by his death, but we're also saved by his life. Absolutely. The life and death mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says that we are a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? What does, what does Jesus' life tell you concerning that in relationship to other human beings? And what is the sacred role in relationship to how we relate to other human beings. Okay, so we've looked about at Jesus. We're going to look at him more as a priest. And we now are seeing that we are called a holy priesthood or a royal priesthood. So when we look at Jesus, we look at his life, we look at his mediation, we look at his sacrifice. What does that mean to us who accept Jesus Christ as our Savior? How does that relate to us? Well, we know, for example, that we are called to be intercessors. And I don't know if you've ever considered this, but God is calling us not just to intercede on our own behalf, but to intercede on the behalf of others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Daniel, for example, in Daniel chapter 9, he prayed and confessed not just his sins, but the sins of others. Right. And he actually put himself in the place of others mm -hmm. as though he were the one that were guilty of their very sins. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. We call right. that corporate repentance. Yeah. It's not, a, not corporate in the sense that you're part of a corporation. Corporate in the sense that you're... Uh, seeing yourself as incorporated with the body of Christ. Right. You're seeing yourselves as part of everyone else. And you don't have this them and us spirit, but you have an inclusive spirit. And because you have that spirit, their sins are something that you need to repent of because you're part of that body, you're part of that group. That was the attitude that Daniel had. And we are called to do the same thing. God wants us to put our, place ourselves in relationship to others with such an attitude and such a spirit that Daniel had, that Ezra had. Ezra had the same spirit, you know. When he found out about the intermarriage and the idolatry that was mm -hmm. going on in, in uh, Israel after they had returned from exile, you know what he did? Oh, man, he was upset. Yeah. He ripped the hair out of his beard, mm -hmm. ripped the hair off his head, mm -hmm. ripped his clothes off and sat in sackcloth and ashes. And he yep. said, Lord, we have sinned. Well, he hadn't intermarried. He hadn't mm. been doing anything adulterous. He hadn't been doing anything wrong. And yet he implored God as though he himself were guilty. Mm. That is this attitude of corporate repentance. Well, guess what? That attitude, that spirit comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Jesus Christ came to this earth and we had sinned. He hadn't sinned. And he incorporated himself with us. He went to the River Jordan and was baptized. Mm -hmm. he, he incorporated himself in human nature with the human family. He became one with us and he took upon himself the responsibility that we only should have borne. Because, of course, if we would have borne that responsibility, That's we wouldn't it. be here right now. That's right. Mm -hmm. Praise God for Jesus Christ and praise God for the wonderful message in the book of Hebrews. Amen. 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 Thank you for that wonderful foundation. Jesus as our high priest. How fascinating. In Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 6, it's quoting uh, God saying to Christ, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Who is this mysterious Melchizedek? Mm -hmm. He's only mentioned twice in the Old Testament mm -hmm. and he is then again in Hebrews 5 through 7 mentioned several times because the Levitical priesthood of the Old Covenant was based on the 
order of Aaron. But Christ's priesthood is based on the order of Melchizedek. So Melchizedek was a Canaanite king and priest. Now, you know, he served as a type of Christ. Mm -hmm. He was not Christ. Mm -hmm. Some people have said Melchizedek mm -hmm. was Christ. No, he served as a representative of God's voice in the world. When Abraham was returning from the valley of Siddim, he'd just rescued Lot. Mm -hmm. He'd overcome a band of raiding kings. <laughs> Boy, he's loaded with booty. Mm -hmm. I mean, all this, you know, in the war, he'd gotten all of this good stuff. He has a meet and greet mm -hmm. with this king priest, mm -hmm. Melchizedek. Genesis 14. Let's look at that. Genesis 14, 18 is where we'll begin. This is what the Bible says, Genesis 14, 18. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest mm -hmm. of God Most High. So we know this Canaanite priest was a worshiper of the one true God. He blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. That's God most high, who's the possessor of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. And verse 20, blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. It's a beautiful blessing. Mm -hmm. But then it says, Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth of all all of his booty. So Melchizedek means king of righteousness. He was the king of Salem, which is another word for Jerusalem, which means king of peace. He was a king of righteousness, a king of pe mm -hmm. peace, a king of peace. And he held two offices as king and priest. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the only time in Israel that a king was a priest. Mm. No priest was ever a king, vice versa, until Christ. So Abraham recognized how important this man was, and he gave him a tenth of everything. Mm -hmm. In Psalm 110 in verse 4, if you want to turn there, Psalm 110 verse 4, this is a messianic psalm, and it refers to one who would be a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. That That's means right. he's going to be both a king and a priest. Psalm 110 verse 4 said, the Lord has sworn and he will not relent. And he's speaking to the Messiah. You are a priest forever mm -hmm. according to the order of Melchizedek. The order of Melchizedek was king and priest. Jesus is both our king and priest. So what we see is that the order of Melchizedek presents a picture to us of the order of Christ's priesthood. Now, it's interesting because we know that the kingly high priest of Christ was superior to the Levitical priesthood that was established mm -hmm. under the law of Moses. But let's read further. Hebrews if you want to turn to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1. Hebrews 7, verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated. And you know, it's interesting, the, the sentence structure here, it's a little confusing. Mm. What it's talking about first being translated is the name of Melchizedek. So it's first being translated king of righteousness and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy. And people go, aha, that's got to be Jesus. <laughs> you know, that's what people do. But let's go on. It says, having neither <laughs> beginning of days nor end of life. Aha, that's got to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. Nope. And he said, but made like the son of God 
remains a priest continuously. See, Melchizedek did have a mother and a father. He was a human being, but the order of Melchizedek, his, his parentage is not recorded. The order of Melchizedek didn't matter who his parents were. Boy, in the Levitical priesthood, yes. in the order of Aaron, mm -hmm. it mattered a whole lot because mm -hmm. you had to follow all that genealogy. But it's interesting, the ancient Syriac Peshetta gives a more accurate translation of this term whose mother and father are not written in the genealogies. Hmm. Is, and and that's, that's what it, uh, the phrase who was without days, without mother, without father is whose mother and father are not written in the genealogies. Mm. We just don't know who his parents were. Mm. It wasn't important. So no record existed of Melchizedek's birth or death. It wasn't recorded because his ancestry, his origin were irrelevant to his priesthood, True. unlike the Levitical mm -hmm. priesthood. Mm -hmm. So the inspired writer of Hebrews references Jesus' priesthood as being in the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in Hebrews 7, 5, it explains that Jesus was priest in the likeness of Melchizedek. And Hebrews 5, 6, we already read, in the order, according to the mm -hmm. order of Melchizedek. So Melchizedek resembled Christ but he, it's, it shows us here that it, he was different than Christ. Mm. He was not a heavenly being. If he was without parentage, if he was without a beginning and end, he would be God himself. Mm. Right. He wasn't. There would have been no, and if he was God himself, there would have been no other need for a priest mm -hmm. to rise up at all. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was not a successor of Melchizedek. I want to yes. make that perfectly mm -hmm. clear. But his priesthood was similar because Jesus is king and Jesus is high priest. If you look at the parallels between Melchizedek and Jesus, Jesus is the ultimate king of righteousness, the ultimate king of peace. Mm -hmm. But unlike Melchizedek, Jesus was sinless. Mm -hmm. So that's, right. th that's why he became right. the mm -hmm. substitute. He was the ideal priest who offered up the ultimate sacrifice that was, it sufficed for all the sins of the whole world. Mm -hmm. So Jesus, his priesthood, his priesthood is universal. It's royal. It's righteous. Mm -hmm. It's peaceful. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's unending. It's good. Jesus is the final high priest in the history of Israel according to the Davidic covenant, the seed of David who's on the throne forever. Just want to leave you with this thought. Our God came from heaven, took on flesh, and became the person of Jesus Christ mm. for the specific reason of dying for our sins, being resurrected in the flesh, and being the new representative at the throne mm. of God for manhood. Mm -hmm. That blows my mind. It is, it to me, is a bigger sacrifice than dying on the cross mm. was that he took on our flesh forever. Mm. That's right. Amen. That Amen. was crystal clear. It I was. think that's the clearest I've ever seen these verses. <laughs> praise <laughs> God. Oh, wow. <laughs> the lights are just going on. Praise oh, God. Praise the Lord. Well, we are not done. We are going to be continuing our study as Jesus, the faithful priest. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Ever wish you could watch a 3ABN Sabbath School panel again? Or share it on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter? Well, you can by visiting 3ABNSabbathSchoolPanel.com. A clean design makes it easy to find the program you're looking for. There are also links to the Adult Bible Study Guide so you can follow along. 
Sharing is easy. Just click share and choose your favorite social media. Share a link. Save a life for eternity. So glad you're back with us. We're going to continue our study as Jesus, the faithful priest with Pastor John Loma King. Yes, I'm covering an effective priest. Mm. And when, when we're looking at this story, uh, one of our lessons, we looked at the man Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking at his priestly function. The book of Hebrews covers from the creation of the worlds yeah. all the way to the restoration of humanity. I love it. And so it's a, it's a book that I think covers a broader span than many of the books in the Bible, yeah. that many of them are covered, cr covering the chronological history of the Israelites. But this one is now taking us from the, from the man who created, the God who created the worlds, the universes, to the one who came down here to get us to those universes. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the effect of priests. One of the things about priests, when you study the Bible, you cannot ignore the first five books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, you have um, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Exodus, starts to dive into more of the functions of the priesthood. Genesis introduces us to humanity, its fall, God's attempt to restore man or the promise to restore man. Then you have the flood, then you have the Tower of Babel. Then you have the generations of the lineage of humanity being separated. The nations are all over the place because God is seeking ways to, uh, to divide them from one another, to keep them from polluting the world as badly as, their, as, their, as the antediluvians did prior to the flood. Mm -hmm. And rebellion is now increasing significantly. And when you look at the call of Abraham, uh, one of the Bible writers said that uh, Abraham was called by God at one of the darkest times in mm -hmm. human history mm -hmm. when the name mm -hmm. of God was almost obliterated from the earth. Mm. But so you have through that lineage, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you have the sons of Jacob, you have the seed that was promised in the book of Genesis and that seed led to the priesthood of Christ, mm -hmm. which now as Shelley laid the foundation, you compare that to Melchizedek, not the Levitical priesthood, which was temporary. But there were so many things about the priesthood of earthly human beings who lived short lives, who had to provide sacrifices for themselves, who were frail in every particular, then you compare to the priesthood of Jesus. So let's look at um, Hebrews 7 verse 11. Let's look at why the priesthood of humanity could not compare to the priesthood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 7 verse 11, therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek? And Shelley, I don't have to spend time on that because you did that, mm -hmm. and not be called according to the order of Aaron. Mm -hmm. In the Levitical priesthood, you find not only were the ceremonies and the sacrifices outlined, but because of the ceremonies and sacrifices, the priesthood had I'm just going to try to say, try to find a nice way to say this. The, the, it was a bloody system. Mm. Mm -hmm. And none of these animals had the sufficiency or the efficacy to really yeah, right. cleanse the person who brought the sacrifices. Can you imagine you stood there and you watched the priests, you watched the, the throat of the lamb being slit and the blood being drained and, and all the sacrifice being burned and the sprinkling of the blood. It was quite a, quite a, spectacular to watch and this happened day in and day out and day in and day out continuously. So you look at that system, you say that was faulty to a large degree. Mm -hmm. These animals could not yeah. cleanse the conscience, even though it was an act of faith of, of forgiving the sin, it just couldn't cleanse the conscience. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse one to three. That's why it was just a temporary thing. Hebrews 10, verse one to three. It says, for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things can never make the, these same sacrifices which they offered how? Continually. Continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshipers once purged mm -hmm. would have had no more consciousness of sin but in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sin every year. Mm. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. how long? Mm. Can you think 
back on how long they waited for the Redeemer, can we say thousands of mm -hmm. land? Can we say hundreds of thousands? Can we Probably. possibly say maybe millions, more than a million? Mm. The blood was just, I mean, the cleansing of the sanctuary was necessary because of just the thought of all the blood that was being sprinkled mm. for the remission of sin. Then you have Hebrews 9 and verse 14. It now compares what I just read yeah, to the good. sufficiency of Amen. Christ. Mm. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, mm. offer himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Mm -hmm. When Jesus gave his life to save you and to save me, it was not just to save us eternally, but it was to purify us, to sanctify us, and to glorify us. Let me say that again, to yeah. justify us, to sanctify us, and to ultimately glorify, mm -hmm. lead us to the position of glorification, not to glorify us, but lead us to that point where we could experience the glorification mm -hmm. that comes in the eradication of sin. That's something that the priesthood on earth couldn't do. Now there was this, where there's no shedding of, shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin, but every day, every day, Abraham sacrificed for his family. Mm -hmm. You find Job, you find all through the Bible, the sacrifi sacrificial system in effect all through the scriptures. And then even after Jesus died, some of the Jews tried to impose that very same thing on the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's go to 1 Corinthians seven nineteen, And then Paul had to make a very definitive statement to the Corinthians because the Jewish leaders who rejected Jesus just couldn't see the efficacy and the sufficiency of his blood. And they were even trying to, to enforce circumcision on the Gentile believers. Mm. But notice what the Lord says, 1 Corinthians 7, 19. Okay, we find here, um, hmm. let's start at verse 18. Was anyone called while circumcised? Mm. Let him not be uncircumcised. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. Paul is saying, it doesn't really matter which one you're in mm. because neither one is of any point right now. Mm -hmm. Verse 19, circumcision is nothing mm -hmm. Uncir and uncircumcision is nothing, mm -hmm. but keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Mm -hmm. And so when you try to impose circumcision for the necessity of being a part of a sacrificial system, which had only a duration of time, it was added because of sin till the seed should come. Galatians 3:19. Mm -hmm. it was added meaning it was added because of sin. Therefore, there was a law in place before the law that uh, included the sacrificial system was added. It was added, this law was added because that law was violated. Mm. This law was added because that law was violated, That's but good. this law was added till the seed should come. It only had a duration. Mm -hmm. When the seed came, it was no longer necessary. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate part is some Christian leaders put both of them in the same category. Right. Yep. <laughs> no, we still have sin today, but the sin bearer, the sin partner, mm -hmm. the justifier, the sanctifier is the one who got rid of that law that was added till he came here, mm -hmm. mm. till he got here, till the seed should come, mm -hmm. Galatians 3.19. And now we go to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 18 and 19. The earthly priesthood was temporary, held by frail yeah. men. For on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness Mm. and unprofitableness. Mm -hmm. Verse 19, for the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. Mm. What, was, what was the writer saying? There's only one mediator between man and God, the yeah, man yeah. Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. The priest wore symbols of the mediator, mm -hmm. but Jesus himself is the mediator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that a better priesthood? Is that a better sacrifice? Oh, yeah. Far greater. Is that a more effective priesthood? Mm -hmm. Far greater. You could not get any more effective priesthood than the priesthood of Jesus because there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved than the name of Jesus. Now, let's see how effective it was. Hebrews 7.25. Let's look at this. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost. uttermost. Mm -hmm. In New York, we used to say from the guttermost <laughs> to the uttermost. Mm -hmm. He saved from the guttermost to the uttermost. Thank you. Those who come to God through him, how effective was his priesthood since he ever lives. I love the way the King James says, mm -hmm. since he ever lives, always lives to make intercession for them. How were we redeemed? What makes his 
redemption so beautiful. Mm. First Peter 1, verse 18 and 19, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things yeah. like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but mm. with mm. the precious blood of Christ right. mm -hmm. as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Was he an effective priest? That's an understatement, but the answer is <laughs> yes. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor John and Shelley and Pastor James. What an incredible study because we're looking at Jesus. Mm -hmm. We're looking at Jesus as our high priest. But what I like the most about this lesson just now is you all are crystal clear. Mm. If there's any, ever any doubt as far as what, who was Melchizedek and what does that even mean? Mm. And how is Christ a priest after the mm. order of Melchizedek? The clarity, Shelley, I love that. Thanks. Melchizedek being the king and priest combined mm. together as we mm -hmm. see in the man Christ Jesus. Pastor John, the efficacy of Jesus as opposed to the Levitical system, the sacrificial system, which was put in place until the seed should come. I That's love right. that. Mm -hmm. Such clarity. Thank you very Praise much. God. So I'm going to actually share some of the same stuff. We're looking at Wednesday's lesson, which is an eternal priest. And we're comparing the Levitical priesthood, which Pastor John did an incredible job of, with Jesus as our high priest. And I want to compare it in five different areas. Sin, mortality, sacrifice, mediator, and covenant. And some of this will be some crossover from what you shared. Sin, mortality, sacrifice, mediator, and covenant. So let's look at sin. The earthly priest, the Levitical system that was set up, as Pastor John already talked about, they're sinful humans. The priesthood themselves were sinful humans bringing the sacrifice before a holy God. Mm -hmm. They were acting, you could say, on behalf of God, but still they were sinful in their humanity. We see in uh, Hebrews 5, turn to Hebrews chapter 5. We'll look at verses 2 and 3. He, this is every high priest, can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. Because of this, he's required as for the people, so for himself to offer sacrifices for sins. Mm -hmm. What's he saying? That the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood that was put in place, they were sinful because they were required to offer sacrifices, not just for the people mm -hmm. and the people who came and confessed their sins over the head of the lamb or the goat. They were required to offer sacrifices for their <laughs> own sins. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, as our high priest, as our effective high priest and eternal high priest, is the perfect high priest. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. lived the perfect life. He was the perfect substitute. And he could make atonement once and for all. Let's yes. look at Hebrews 7, verse 26 and 27. For such a high priest, this is referring to Jesus, was fitting for us. Who is, what's that word? Holy. Who mm -hmm. is harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. I just want to stop a second. You think of the Levitical priesthood. Were they holy? No. Mm -hmm. They were sinful. Were they harmless? No. no. Were they undefiled? Absolutely not. They were defiled with sin. Were they separate from sinners? No, they were part of this sinful, sinful humanity. Mm. Jesus has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once for all when he offered himself. Hey. So mm -hmm. that sacrificial system, as Pastor John brought out so beautifully, was pointing forward to the Messiah, pointing forward to Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, who would take away the sins of the world. So that's the comparison of sin. Let's mm -hmm. look at the comparison of mortality. The earthly Levitical priests certainly were mortal, were they not? Mm -hmm. Hebrews 7, verse 23. Also, there were many priests. 
because they were prevented by death from continuing. Deuteronomy chapter 18 talks about the Levitical priesthood, as Shelley brought out, was hereditary. In other words, it went down from father to son, and there was this very consistent genealogy, you could say, of the, to be a priest, you had to be of the mm -hmm. tribe of Levi. Mm -hmm. It followed that specific genealogy, but yet they were mortal. They only lived so many years, and then they died. But Jesus, as our high priest, is eternal. Amen. Paul doesn't stop there. The verse 23, it goes on to verse 24. I love that. But he, that's Jesus, because he continues forever, mm -hmm. has an unchangeable mm -hmm. priesthood. Yes. He continues forever. Mm -hmm. God alone, 1 Timothy 6, 16. God alone has immortality. Amen. Jesus, the Word, became flesh right. and dwelt among us. Jesus, the pre-existent one, existing with the Father from before the foundation of the world, became flesh for you and I. The perfect life, the perfect Lamb of God, the perfect mm -hmm. sacrifice to put an end, of course, to that sacrificial system because Jesus came, the eternal high priest. Mm -hmm to forgive us and to cleanse us and to intercede for us. Amen. We're transitioning into sacrifice, so let's go there. The earthly Levitical priests, what did they offer? They offered animal sacrifices, mm -hmm. did they not? Mm -hmm. They <laughs> offered sheep and lambs and goats and bulls. They offered those burnt offerings the grain offering, the peace offering, the sin offering, the trespass offering, all of those offerings, those animal sacrifices, they weren't all animal, the grain of course was not. But they all were symbols or types pointing forward to Jesus, mm -hmm. who would be the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Hebrews 9, verse 28. Okay. We see Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. You see, he didn't have to offer his life many times. It wasn't every oh, time we man. sin, he has to be offered again. He offered once mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. his perfect life and his perfect death satisfied mm -hmm. the claims of the law. The wages of sin is death, yes, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Pastor John references Hebrews 9, 12, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Jump down to verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living Christ. So you see the, the Israelites with the sacrificial system, the Levitical system, that offering, the slain of the animal, the offering of the animal, that didn't cleanse them. It was by faith looking forward to the coming Messiah. It was Jesus' blood that was sacrificed that saved us all those sins from the past and all those sins in the Amen. future if we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hebrews 2, 17 says, Jesus is the one who came and made propitiation <laughs> for the sins of the people. Now let's look at point number four. That's the mediator. The earthly Levitical priests, they mediated between God and the people. Now they really couldn't mediate because Jesus is the only mediator, right. but they stood in the place, you could say, of God to bring that atonement between God and the people. You can read Leviticus chapter 16 and see that laid out very clearly. Jesus, Hebrews 7, 25, I wanna read it again. Mm -hmm. Therefore he, Jesus, is also able to save to the uttermost. He's able to save completely, forever, perfectly, through all time, those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. Have you ever felt like God couldn't save you? Have mm. you ever felt like you've done too much? Mm. You've gone too far? Mm. You've traveled down a road? Or maybe you know that he's forgiven you and cleansed you and uh, you messed up again. Sometimes I say, God, seriously? I thought I got victory over that, Pastor mm. Ryan. I thought, you know, I was really walking in victory and all of a sudden something happens and I think that old woman of sin is trying to rise up again mm. and I have to go back to my savior. 
and know that he not only forgives and cleanses, he's right now interceding That's true. at the right hand of the Father and he can save completely, mm -hmm. utterly for all time. Right. Number five, the last comparison is the covenant. Mm -hmm. The first covenant we see was dedicated with blood, was it not? You can read that in Exodus 24, but Paul references it in Hebrews 9:18. Mm -hmm. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. What about the new covenant? The new covenant is dedicated and ratified with Christ's blood. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 9, 15, for this reason, he, Jesus, is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgression under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of in eternal inheritance. Jesus' death on behalf of the transgressors both attested to the validity of the old covenant and redeemed us from death in addition, it inaugurated the new covenant. Mm -hmm. mm, wow, flawless. Thank you so much. That was very, very nice. I'm Ryan Day, and I have Thursday's lesson entitled A Sinless Priest. And we're going to dive right into this because the premise on which this uh, whole section is built is built on the message that we find in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26. Uh, this verse has already been read, I think, a couple of times uh, throughout this lesson, but we're going to go and we're going to focus in and uh, go a little deeper into the details we find therein. So Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 26, describing Jesus Christ, it says, For such a high priest was fitting for us. Hmm who is holy, yeah. harmless, undefiled, yeah. separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. And the lesson brings out that these five characteristics or divine, uh, expressing the divine nature of Jesus Christ, of course, is what ultimately makes him to be fitting as our high priest, that he is holy, he is harmless, he is undefiled, he is separate from sinners, and of course, has become higher than the heavens. So let's take the first one here. Jesus is holy. Very yes. clear. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. It says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize mm -hmm. with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, here it is again, yet without right. sin. Mm -hmm. Jesus is holy. He has never sinned. Sin did not overcome him because he surrendered to the will of his father. He allowed the righteousness of his father to become his own. And therefore he is righteous. He is holy. He is yet without sin. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter five, verses seven through nine. Let's go there. Hebrews five, verses seven through nine. Again, under this concept of Christ is holy. Mm -hmm. Who in the last days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Mm -hmm. Though, notice it says, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience yeah. by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. And so my friends, we're talking about Christ being holy. He is perfected. He is perfect because he is sinless. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter four, verses 33 and 34. Notice what the Bible says. Now in the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. Mm -hmm. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Even yeah. demons knew that Jesus was holy. And of course, because he was sinless. The lesson brings out Jesus was holy. Mm -hmm. This means that Jesus was without fault in relationship to God. Of course, we see that in Hebrews 10, 18, Hebrews 4, 4, 15, as well as Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. The old Greek translation of the Old Testament used the same Greek term to designate those who maintain their covenant relationship with God mm -hmm. and with us. You know what? And I even like to just apply here just a lesson for us. You know, we are also called, as 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 tells us, we are also called to be holy as He yes. is holy. That's but right. of course, Christ is the ultimate holy because He is sinless as this lesson is bringing out. The second part of, of this scripture that Christ uh, is speaking of the characteristics of Christ. Christ is harmless. Jesus yes. is harmless. What does it mean that he is harmless? I looked at the original Greek word here. It's the word akakos, which means simple and innocent. Mm. Simple mm. and innocent. Like In other words, you know, how many of you have ever ran scared like a little school girl for your life from a little baby pet lamb? 
right? Christ is often described as the lamb of God, a harmless. You look at a lamb and it's harmless, right? It's innocent. It's simple in this case. And of course, we see that Christ is likened into the lamb of God all throughout the book of Revelation. And you heard me say baby pet lamb because the word arneon, literally in the Greek, which is how Christ is expressed all throughout the book of Revelation, is a little baby pet lamb, a lamb of the first year, harmless, innocent. And when we read that great love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, as I was preparing for this lesson, this is what kept pouring through my mind. He is harmless because God is love. And as we have learned, in this in this uh, series so far God is love Christ mm -hmm. is God which makes okay. him love and what does first Corinthians 13 verse 4 through 7 tell us love suffers along in his kind you can just insert Christ name right there because he is love Christ suffers long in kind mm -hmm. Christ does not envy Christ does not parade himself he is not puffed up he does not behave rudely he does not seek his own he does not he is not provoked <laughs> uh, thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in truth bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. He is harmless. Mm -hmm. Christ also, as our point number three here, Jesus is undefiled. Yeah. This is crucial because he could not be our high priest if he was not sinless and undefiled. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter two, verse 18 alludes to this. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted. He is able to aid those who are tempted. Christ couldn't aid us who are tempted unless he had first been tempted and passed the test. Mm. He was undefiled. He had no sin. And of course, even Leviticus chapter 1 verses 3 through 10 alludes to the fact that Christ, of course, being the antitype, that lamb, every time it was slain mm -hmm. in the sacrificial scene there, we see that it had to be not just any old kind of lamb or goat, but it had to be a lamb or a goat that was without spot, without blemish. Of course, pointing forward to Jesus yeah. Christ, who as the lamb of God who would be led to the slaughter, would be without spot and blemish. We read yeah. this in Leviticus chapter 1 verses 3 and 10, and it says, if his offering is a burnt sacrifice, of the Lord. Let him offer a meal without blemish. He shall offer it of his own free will at the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the Lord. And then verse 10, if his offering is of the flocks, of the sheep or of the goats, as a burnt sacrifice, he shall bring a meal without blemish. Jesus, mm -hmm. of course, his Jesus' perfect obedience during his earthly life made it possible for him to offer himself as an acceptable sacrifice to God without spot and without blemish mm -hmm. indeed. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 9, of course, verses 14 and 15 also alludes to this because it says, how much more shall the blood yes. of Christ, we read this earlier, mm -hmm. how much more mm -hmm. shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself mm -hmm. without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from the dead works to serve the living God. We'll just stop there right now. You can read verse 15 because I'm running out of time here. I have a lot to talk about. Let's go to our fourth point here, which is crucial. Christ was separate from mm -hmm. sinners. Mm -hmm. He was separate from sinners. The lesson brings out that Jesus was separated from sinners when he ascended to heaven. The Greek verb tense suggests that this is a present state for Jesus, which began at a specific point in time. Jesus endured hostility from the sinners during his earthly life, but he was victorious. And when then he seated, when he was seated at the right hand of God, of course, being separated from sinners. But then it goes on to say, Jesus is also, and this is a little different, separate from sinners mm -hmm. and that he was perfectly sinless. Mm -hmm. Perfectly sinless. So he was separated from sinners in the sense that he's now at the right hand of God. But yet we also know that he was separate from sinners. Aren't we called to be that as well? Mm -hmm. While we are sinners, we are to separate ourselves from the sinful world mm -hmm. as also did Christ Jesus our Lord. That's right. The fifth point, very important here. Jesus is higher than the heavens. This is an identity, of course, of his divine character, of who he is, his divine identity in the Godhead. In fact, Jesus is one with God the Father. And we see this message coming from Psalm chapter 57, verses 5 through 11. There's some other texts as well. But Psalm 57, verses 5 through 11, it says, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Jesus is higher than the heavens. Of course, he would not be able to be our high priest if he was not, right? Because mm -hmm. he is one with God. He is sinless. I think that this, this last quotation here from Desire of Ages, page 25 and 26, would really sum all of this up really great. In fact, it would probably sum up the entire lesson. 
It says it was Satan's purpose to bring about an eternal separation mm -hmm. between God and man. But in Christ, we become more closely united to God than if we had never fallen. In taking our nature, the Savior had bound himself to humanity by a tie that is never to be broken. This is the pledge that God will fulfill his word. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. God has adopted hu human nature in the person of his son and has carried the same into the highest heaven. It is the son of man who shares the throne of the universe. It is the son of man whose name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, That's the right. Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, as we see in Isaiah 9 and 6. The I am is the daysman between God and humanity, laying his hand upon both. He who is holy, harmless, undefiled, mm -hmm. separate from sinners, is not ashamed to call us brethren. Mm -hmm. In Christ, the family of earth and the family of heaven are bound together. Christ glorified mm -hmm. is our brother. Heaven is enshrined in humanity and humanity is enfolded in the bosom of infinite love. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. Isn't that Amen. wonderful? We look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He is our high priest. He is perfect. He is, is sinless. And my friends, Spirit of Prophecy makes it even clearer that we also, because of what Christ has done, can live without sin, but that's only possible because of the perfect one, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank Go you, ahead. Ryan. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, John. Thank you, Shelly. Everything just clicks. You know what I mean? We've got a few minutes left and we're just going to have some closing thoughts. Shelley? I, Hebrews 7.22 just keeps screaming at mm. me mm. because Hebrews 7.22, Jesus is not just our Redeemer, mm. our Savior, our High Priest and our brother. Hebrews 7.22 says he is the guarantor, the mm -hmm. surety yes. of the new covenant. Mm -hmm. He's God's assurance from God to us that all of his promises are yes and amen in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. He's assurance from us to God that he's working in us to will and to do God's good pleasure. Yes, and Shelley, I'm going to build off of that. He's working so effectively in us as an effective priest that while we are being sanctified, listen to what Hebrews says about while we're being sanctified. Hebrews 10, 14, for by one offering he has perfected forever. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Those who are being sanctified, Thank fear not your walk with Christ. His perfection can cover any sin you bring to Hallelujah. Him. And as He's building you and getting you ready for eternity, His efficacy, His righteousness it's has perfected us Amen. forever while we are being sanctified. Amen. 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 I'm just amazed as I think of the depths that Jesus went to mm -hmm. to save us. Just as we're sitting on the panel here, I just remind it again, that plan of salvation is incredible. And yes. God put it wow. in place from the foundation of the world because He loves us, mm -hmm. because He wants you in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. I referenced this earlier, the Upward Look, page 303. It says, Christ took humanity and bore the hatred of the world that He might show men and women that they too could live without sin. You know, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My friends, we have a perfect sinless Savior who is our high priest. Look unto him today for salvation. Amen. Amen. The message in these last days is the message in the book of Hebrews. And if you have been blessed, we want to encourage you to continue to join us for this Sabbath school quarter. You are vital to God's heart. He loves you. He's given everything for you and he wants you to be in his kingdom. So please, please take this opportunity to get to know Jesus as your faithful high priest. Amen. Our next week's lesson is Jesus, the anchor of the soul.